while I was in prison, I was literally dead. And I was watching people coming to view my corpse. So I began to see from prison who was crying, who was mourning, who was celebrating, who was throwing in soil inside the grave so that I don't even get a chance to rise up. So I saw all that. What was your first night like? Uh, horrible. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt I even slept. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be violated. Mm -hmm. But then you're going into a place of criminals. Yeah. People that have violated people before. Yeah. And you are hearing them hearing swearing those and, and that, saying those things to yeah, you to say yeah. that we are going to violate you. We deal with men who are struggling and cannot even open up because of how we're socialized to keep things in. You know, who feel neglected, who are struggling with identity. What role? Does the man need to play in society to ensure that our society is healed? Uh, violent people don't talk when they attack you. Mm. Even those that are in jail, you ask them, where is your father? They tell you, I never knew my father. Are you really? Yeah, I'm all right. Mm -hmm. So, I remember this was end of January, right? So, we recorded an interview and just as we're about to release it, I remember the Friday we spoke. I think maybe Friday afternoon. Do you remember what I'm Because I'm reminding you about the interview with Bob Masgad mm. on Sunday. Mm. And... Saturday, I try to get in touch with you to just confirm final logistics. Phone off. Sunday, I try to call you. Phone off. I remember eventually, I'm like, oh, KG is my girl. It's like a phone. KG. KG says to me. Where do you get KG's number? No, you know I've always had KG's number. What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> me and KG are girls. Like, she's my girl. KG right. says to me. Mm. Huh? What happened? She's like. Like, my heart sank. I don't even know how to explain that feeling. You know, I thought that was bad. But I remember the day I visited you in prison. Like, I almost exploded. I don't know whether you could see. Like, I was literally... What, so, some moments are guessing, give me hell and were you able to see? No, no, I couldn't. Uh, you, did, you, you, was I, did I seem composed? Yeah. You looked all in control and everything. Uh, I almost, I almost burst out crying, but I was like, I need to be strong for him, you know? Mm. I don't even know whether I needed to be strong for you. I don't know whether you felt you needed to be strong for me, but like it was really, really hard. Mm. But anyways, you went to prison, my yeah, friend. Yeah, yeah. On that Friday. On that Friday. Yes, and like you are saying, uh, we were talking, I think, mid-morning, mm. uh, preparing for the recording that was to come on a Sunday. Mm. Yeah, so I think uh, when we were talking, I was going through the process of, of, of being arrested. But of course, yes, as, as a businessman, as a pastor and as a father, I could not show you that at the same time I was talking to you, I was in the middle of a process of, of being arraigned and taken to prison. Hmm. That's how um, everything else, because it started in the morning, that process started hmm. in the morning. So even by the time we spoke, you knew yeah, what I knew. was bubbling under. Yeah, I knew. Hmm. By, the, by that time, I was already... Uh, aware that I'm going to prison. Mm. Yeah. But I needed, to, even, even with the girls, mm. I didn't tell them. Uh, but you're talking all the time. I didn't tell them as, that I was under arrest because first I needed to process the whole thing, mm. what it meant, um, you know, how to deal with it. And also who to tell and why, you know, because uh, you don't want to tell your wife while she's still at work and then she collapses. Yeah. So you need to be able to... Uh, Calculate everything, every moment, every second. At that moment, you know, you are trying to make so many decisions all at the same time. Sometimes even to decide, you know what, maybe instead of me trying, because some other people, when that happens, they, 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 they resist, they fight, or they run away. Mm. But then with me, I was calm. I was collected. I offered my hands to be handcuffed. And I was handcuffed and carried away to prison. And why, why were you calm? I was calm because, you know, I think um, it's something that I, I, I can't say I didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that uh, at one point in my life it's going to happen. Because you see, I am a spiritual person and I know that uh, there are certain things that before they happen, something else has to happen. Especially something bad. You know, if you, 
you you are a spiritual person you should know that before a breakthrough before a big movement upwards there is always going to be something that shakes you you know it 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 kind of it comes to come and check really whether you 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 are strong or not so i i have always known that either spiritually for my spiritual growth for me to get to the next level as a pastor something bad has to happen you know bad maybe to 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 us as human beings but maybe uh, with god is not really something that is bad it's a it's a it's a promotion from his side you know so i it's it's kind of like i was always prepared like though it was a little bit difficult and 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 believe me if you were to bring uh, the guys that arrested me that is why i'm friends with them now you know we we talk even this morning i talked to them the, the, sheriff. the, the sheriffs that arrested me mm. because of my conduct I, i was very calm we even during the day ate together i had a chance to run away but i didn't what was that last meal before you went in yeah i just had the normal palish and uh, uh, meat and 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 morogo mm. yeah and i knew like I, even at that time i had already done the covid test mm. so but i ate oh so you need to do a covid test before going to prison yeah Oh, wow. I don't know I don't what, know what for, but yeah. you do it. Does it mean if you test positive, then at least the other thing is you, you know what I mean? That's what I'm asking because either way, uh, you're going, you're maybe, going, maybe yeah. I think for, for isolation purposes. Yeah. So yeah. that when you get to prison, then they will isolate you. But you know what? You'll go to prison. Once they have arrested you, they say, why don't you arrest on, on you? You have to go to prison. Had you ever, you know, been, what is it? How is it? to prison in this particular context but mm. you know how people will have you know days of or like a night of drunken driving or whatever whatever little thing you have mm. a little tiff boys and you end up somehow mm. had you had that experience before this i've never been arrested mm. i've never been taken to a uh, police to court i i grew up as one of the um, guys or kids that had no problem with the law Mm. Actually in my life I've done everything in my power to avoid uh, having a confrontation with the law. Mm. But then you decide you, you notice as you grow up you face life that it is not about what you do. Sometimes things happen not because you have done anything but because they have to happen. Mm. So I've never been to prison. I've never been to a police cell. It was my first time to get into into prison. Mm. Yeah. Now let's I want you to take me through your emotions, right? Mm. So you can see what is happening the days unfolding. and you can tell as you're saying i call you as your friend you know we're talking about this interview mm. checking up on each other and you don't say anything yeah. you're not saying anything to your wife but i need to understand the emotions you know what i mean like what exactly is going through your mind how are you feeling uh what is your perception of god in that moment i know now uh in retrospect you are able to say that could have only been god right but in that moment what are you thinking what is going through your head I think the emotions vary a uh, minute to minute mm. um hour to hour you know because when you are arrested when I was arrested there were um, I I was so disappointed mm. disappointed in the fact that you know the person that um arrested me is obviously a friend mm. and and I've always believed that and and mind you it is me who 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 called for the meeting You initiated the I initiated meeting, the day. meeting to when say let's let's come and have a, a conversation around this issue mm. you know and then uh, he had set me up and 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 arrested me mm. and and I was disappointed based on that and then there was also a feeling of anger you know sometimes that you know as a businessman you you you, you get angry at your failures mm. although we we read so many times that um we you can't learn anything from victory you learn a lot <laughs> through failure mm-hmm. but when failure comes you don't feel like you are learning of anything of course it doesn't feel like oh okay <laughs> yeah, no, nobody lesson. smiles mm, to failure i can't wait to find out what the lesson is exactly no, it's my painful. point you know yeah. it's very painful mm-hmm. as a human being you react like a, a proper human being mm-hmm. so i was i was disappointed i was angry and then though i was calm you could i i, I doubt that you could read it from a distance that I was going through all those emotions but I I decided just just to kind of bottle them in uh, process them you know at the same time and then also uh, as a spiritual person I always quickly go back to my spirituality you know go back to the bible like what does it say in my situation you know I I understood I begin to understand that even through that 
nothing will separate me from the love of God. Mm -hmm. So I relied on that to say, listen, even if I'm being arrested right now, God still loves me. Mm -hmm. So if, if God loves me, what can really... If God is for you, who can, who be, can against be against me? me? But now, you know, you wrote so elaboratively on your Facebook page, yeah, there's a cat, it's just about your experience. And I remember just going through that on some, wow, this guy is a damn good writer. So I'm hoping we're, we ha we, we've got a book coming up, right? Yeah, well, we're working on something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I want you to now take me into those few minutes or hours. I don't know how long it could have possibly taken. Now, literally getting into prison. Yeah. What is the process? You know what I mean? Yeah. For somebody who's never experienced it, I know you take us through it, you know, in a very graphic manner. <laughs> you know, you literally talk about dying. So, what I want you to take us there. Yes. We you are going prison. Go guy. How it's and what do you see? You know what I mean? Just take us through that. I'm laughing because um one of the things that I had while I was in prison was that uh, my family members, uh, both my, my parents, my grandmas, my uncles, uh, they, were, they were so worried to extend that they begin to say this, that I begin to reflect deeply on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in our family, uh, we have got bad boys and, 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 and you know, good boys. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm one of the, those that they the good term boys. good boys. Yeah. You understand? And, mm -hmm. and for some reason, they think that I'm just too soft. And I remember that my, my grandmother, hey, we're going to be to And I'm beginning to even name some yeah. of my, my, my cousins that they said, no, I'm going to be able to this one. Yeah, 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 Because I think that's just the perception of people that they have about me. Mm. You know, because when you are, you are kind of, you appear soft, people think that you are weak. Mm. But sometimes being calm is, is, is the strongest thing that you can do. And, and it helped me. Because you, 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 I then make it very impossible or difficult for people from a distance to read what I'm thinking mm -hmm. and what my next move is. So like you are saying, now going back to the issue of uh, the, the final moments as you, you get into prison now. You know, everything has been done. The paperwork has been done. It has been signed uh, that you are going. And you can see that at that point, every call that you could make, every person that you could talk to take you out of prison, nothing has happened now. And you finally resign to the fact that you are going to spend yeah, that, that particular night. You know that even if there's something that is to happen, it can happen the next day or maybe the next week or the next month. But you know for a fact that this night I'm going to jail. And it is your first time. It is your, You don't even know how jail looks like. So then you walk in and the more you are walking closer to the prison um, uh, doors, the more there is that a huge like like weight on you like it's like you are walking away from from everything you're walking away from your your freedom you're walking away from your family mm -hmm. so the closer you get to that big huge door you know the, the difficult it becomes and at, at a point in time in 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 hindsight there was a time when i was taken out of a uh, jail to go and meet some of my my friends and this is the same day no, later. Okay, okay. And I then realized that when I came in, there are things that I didn't see. Mm. You know, I, I was only to see. You I was were literally able, yes. just like in a, in a, got almost like dreaming, like yeah, in a moment, like, hella, you're, everything is just like. Like my feet were yeah. not even touching the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's how mm. difficult it is. You begin to see that huge door being opened. You go through it, the first scanner. Then there's that banging noise behind you. You can tell that they have really locked me up. You know, they remove your belts, they remove your shoes, you are told to undress so that you can go through a scanner. So all that process, like, is so foreign and it's so heavy and, 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 and difficult, but you, you just have to go through it. It's the process. Um, all, Do you feel violated in that moment? Because yeah, I can you, imagine having to take, as it is, even with people close to us, it's you know, having to take off your clothes against your will can be really hard. Yeah. So I can imagine. And how many people are watching? And you don't even want to go there in the first place. Remember that, yeah. or, or, you know, although you, you are walking in, you don't want to be there. Mm. You, know, you know, and then being told to undress and, and you know, remain naked. You stand before strangers mm. and you are being scanned by machines. It's, it's like, I think it's one of the most 
horrific and terrible thing that any human being can go through. Can I ask you now, this is deep, right? And I'm only asking you because you are my friend, right? Yeah. So in this moment, where are your hands? Because I'm thinking, you know, naturally, the first thing would be, mm. are your hands here? Are you here? And are you expected? Is there an expectation? Are you here? You, know you have I mean? to stand in a way that doesn't suggest that you are taking something. So your mm-hmm. hands has to be away from your body. Uh, you have to, you know, literally surrender to, to the machine because they have to do a scan whether you are bringing sharp objects, you are bringing cell phones, you are bringing drugs. They don't want that. So they have to scan your all, your entire body. So your hands has to be, um, you know, free and, free, and, away, from your body, yeah, yeah. and away from your body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so you go through that and then do you have a private cell? You know, do you, what then is the next step? Once you've been scanned and searched, you were, I remember when I came to visit, the one thing that I was wondering is, you know what I mean? Uh, My sister and I, and I was on hold. And you know, orange, you know, so we're sitting there wondering, Mm-hmm. And we're like, why? Which one is? You get what I'm saying? I was yeah. shocked to get in there and find you just wearing jeans and a tee. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, look at that. Mm-hmm. So, and then you walk into what? Mm-hmm. A room, a private little cell. Do you walk into a space with everyone there? So, get us into that moment. Yeah, because you, I, I got in around three just before they, they are locked in. Because one of the things with prison is that your day ends at three. But it latest it about half past three um, when they are late. Mm-hmm. So when you guys sleep at 10, 11, 12, midnight, uh, we would have already slept around three. We have already been locked in uh, our cells by, by 3 p.m. Mm-hmm. You know. So when, when I got in, uh, you are given some blankets, you know, uh, they just throw those at you. They just take them from. You. No, they are not even wiped. You know, they are not even. You don't even know who the last person to sleep on is, and everything like that. They just throw them at you. They give you two or three. It makes. You remember, there are no beds in there, so those we are going to use as. Uh, you know whatever mm. so then the most um uh traumatic thing that i uh, that i that i i think um i felt was that you 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 after everything has been done on the second uh, phase now where they they give you uh those blankets and then they take the belt away they take the phones away you switch them off they take them you 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 are then Taken into the last gate now. The 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 prison uh, guard stand behind you. Then they open the gate. When they are doing that, the 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 prisoners inside they begin to take notice that one person is being Which admitted. Was, eh? So it excites them. <laughs> you know, they begin to say all sorts of things. Yeah. They begin to either mock you. Some they they begin to say, "Hey, Masayo, wami yo, wami yo, yo tana yo, kamu ito pela kwa." You understand? Where to be? Yo kwami yo, kito ko fida and and baby ko wami yo enawa one. Those kind of things. And mind you, as a man, the most I don't know even know maybe even as women, you don't want to be violated. Hmm. But then you are getting to a strange place where also you have got this thing at the back of your mind that you are getting to a place of criminals, yeah. people that have violated people before, yeah. and you are hearing them. Swearing and, and that saying you. those things to yeah, you to say yeah. that we are going to violate you. And mind you, those guys are just there. Like they, they are not in cells. They are just watching about. Mm. And somebody is about to throw you right inside. And they lock the gate behind you. Mm. And, and all that they could say is that you see that particular uh, cell. cell there. That's where you are going. It's about a distance maybe of 50 to 70 meters mm. or 100 meters at, mo- at most. You have to walk from that gate to that particular cell. There. You don't. You don't even know a single person. You don't even know whether there are crazy people in there, lunatic people there, carrying weapons. You. Yeah, yeah. You have got no idea. Your 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 mind and 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 your understanding of what criminals are is the one that you have before you go to prison. Just as you when you see those guys outside there, you are kind of scared. Mm. I was also scared in in that manner. 
but then you have to go through them. Mm. And they're seeing all those sorts of things. So who's the first person you talk to you or who's the first person who talks to you like now in an intimate moment? Could it not? You know what I mean? The first conversation you have inside is with who and how did it come about? Yeah, the, the, just somehow, you know, um, you, you, you kind of have, you would have one person who doesn't like what everybody else is doing. Of course. Yeah. And then as you come in, they would want to isolate you mm. from the crowd to calm you down. Yeah, you, literally uh, walking towards the cell yeah, in this moment. Yeah. And there are guys who are waiting, seated by the tree next to the cell. Those are the people, normally people stay, spend their, their the rest of the day in front of their cell. So as you are going towards that cell, those guys in front of the cell are, are actually people that you're going to stay with. Mm. So as you come in, one of them will just volunteer. You, at that moment, you can't even tell who's talking to you and who's yeah. not talking to you. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, yeah. your, your guards are up. You mm. know, you are wait, expecting a, a, a fist fight already. Mm. You know, so you uh, one guy, I can't even remember who was the first to, to start a conversation, but somehow some one guy started a conversation. And, uh, and then when they did, you begin to calm down and, and um, you get collected. Then they begin to welcome you. They tell you now that um, this cell that you are coming in is for people like yourself, mm. uh, where it's either you are uh, an MP, a councillor. You, why do you call your dignitaries? You know, mm. uh, and then elders, and then debtors, and then so they've got a special cell mm -hmm. where they put them in. Mm -hmm. So then that is where I I was staying. What was your first meal? Well, Inside. I never eat uh, from prison. As you know, I don't eat generally <laughs> from prison. Hey, so from the moment you got in, your wives were delivering food every single day? Yeah, twice a day. The person I was, I was, two wives, eh? Hey, what to go I, I, was, I was eating uh, from home all the time. But uh, didn't that is, that you... Is, that is because, a, yeah. uh, you have to understand that that is because as a debtor, mm. When you go to prison on civil matters, you are allowed three visits a day. Mm -hmm. And then you are allowed a food from outside. But when you are convicted, when you are convicted now, mm. which is different, you can't have that. Ah, so there are a few privileges that you have. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because okay. you are on a civil matter. Mm -hmm. So that is why I was able to have my meals from home. Mm -hmm. And as you know, I always prefer to eat home cooked food mm. so I was saving the normal food that they're eating at home mm. delivered to me twice a day and didn't you for a minute and I know this is not high school of course it's not like school vibes but didn't you for a minute feel like I'm not like the rest of you Luna didn't it feel like that? Didn't you for a minute just think, okay, for me to assimilate and become part of the family, I need to do what everyone well, they else don't is get doing to see and me, just become... They don't get yeah. to see me uh, taking my minutes because I still have to go to the visitation area. Of course. So so how would you are we ready? Whenever, whenever else is eating, yeah. I'll just be there. I'll, I can either start reading my book mm. or my Bible or just be sleeping. What was your first night like? Uh, horrible. Mm -hmm. I, I doubt I even slept. Why mm -hmm. did that's you? when I think it was about 1987, 1989, mm -hmm. 1988, somewhere around there. But then immediately on my first night in prison, and then I'm uncomfortable. And these guys are laughing because they know what it is and they're reminding me, welcome to prison. Mm -hmm. This is what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are uncomfortable because it was a so good or with my most or any hiding recent one. So you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Habe, now you are settled now. You know, the reality of, 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 of you being in prison is starting to, to play now. The, the reality that you are not sleeping with your wife, uh, you, you, you are not in your house, is beginning to play in your mind. So mm -hmm. you can't sleep the first day. Absolutely. Yeah. So now, you know, I, I, I'm imagining where your wife's there when you were finally, like, locked in. I don't know how else to put it, but how are we hell No, they saw me the second day. The, yeah, they, they, were, they were not there. Um, and, and like I'm saying, I told them, 
at the last minute now mm. when i was sure that i'm getting in mm. so by then it was late yeah, they couldn't even even if they wanted to come they could not come because i i was still trying what i could try to avoid going there but then when i noticed that i can't and I, by then i was already at prison i finally had to call and i called the one to say call your sister wife and mm. i called garrison and said tell your sister wife that i'm not be coming home I have been arrested I'm going to jail. And what was her response? She told me she had, she already know. Yes. I didn't know how she found out but I think my business partner. Yeah, had, had, had told her because he was the only person that I told mm. and and for a reason. Mm. Uh, that me and him had always talked about this. We 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 have been building something big that we knew that uh, there might be um interest in on our personal lives mm. and just as we predicted it happened exactly yeah now um i understand over time you kind of became a hit right you yeah. became everyone's confidant you yeah. know you became the go to guy now for uh you know people trusted you and now yeah. maybe that is the pastor in you right yeah. I, i want us to get to that but before that They, they were now and i think this literally you know what people didn't know the day the voice came out got the headline yeah had the you know uh you were is it harassed or you were beaten to were, a pulp yeah. in prison because they didn't trust you is the day that you came out but did that happen was there a sense of mistrust you know yeah, you was. being there and you know did that happen Yeah, it happened, but not in the manner that it was painted in the, in the newspaper. Mm. It happened. They had, I think, they have, that was leaked by, we know who leaked that. Mm. Uh, there was a conversation that uh, we were having with uh, our lawyers, and and there were people that were present when that was being discussed. We mm. suspect that those people leaked that the whole thing to the media, and then they overexaggerated mm. everything. Yes, but they, there was a, there was a a fist fight that I was involved in. You know, I was threatened. I was, I was almost maybe, uh, for a lack of better words, uh, promised to, to be killed at, at 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 that moment. There was, there was. There, I think, with the hindsight, I should have not allowed certain people to check on me. Mm. You know, because you should understand that I'm I'm a regional secretary of the ruling party. Mm. Uh, I've got friends uh, who are MPs, who are ministers, who are councillors. I've got friends who are police officers who are um, in the intelligence uh, uh, units. So when they heard of my arrest, they behaved like friends would do. Yeah. You know, but that, that they, came, they came to check on me, mm. you know, because also I was expecting them to check on me while I was in jail. Mm. But as they begin to come, you know, prisoners, they, they, are, they are very attentive to who comes to prison mm. because they have got a life that they live in prison and outside mm. that they don't want interference so as ministers begin to come check on me uh, my friends from all oxo started to check on me they got very uncomfortable for this guy if he could have these people come in to check on him clearly he should not be here exactly especially so that he's on doing? yeah what are you doing here yeah what are so you the, doing here so then i didn't know that that was the the the, the problem yeah. i didn't know that that was, that was being discussed until the time when we had that fist fight uh with the shape that I was involved in and it started off when I was trying to protect one of the boys that I I I was I was close to you know the in prison a lot of things happen one of them is that you know they they are this um I don't know what to call them men to men relationships mm -hmm. you know when men sleep with each other and then when you are new they either like I'm saying where they say almost said you and stuff like that So they they had interest in one of the guys that were very close to me, such that every time we would go and uh, bath, they would come and line up before us. They were not necessarily looking at me; they were looking, paying attention to to this guy, and I didn't like it. He didn't like it because he, it was making him uncomfortable, also. So I I then decided to speak to one of the chefs to say, guys, what you are doing is is not okay. You can't be washing men while well, they are batting is mm. is improper so then the chap started a fight mm. you know <laughs> it didn't come out as that immediately you know you know uh, violent people don't talk when they attack you mm. you know you talk to you try to reason to them the next thing you know is is a is, is a clap or a, a fist mm. because that's just how they react to to, to confrontation mm. 
So we, 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 we got involved, we fought, we fought. And then before I knew it, there was a whole uh, mm -hmm. number of prisoners that came to help the guy. Mm -hmm. That's when I, I, I began to see that, oh, there is again now. Yeah, because also then I didn't understand the prison no, life so that they are against in prison. Yeah. When you attack one, you are taking the you are taking the whole game. Hmm. So they have to fight for their for for their friends, and they came in huge numbers. But then I also had my 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 friends that stood with me. Mm. Yeah, we fought for 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 that moment and. And is fight. that is that uh, you know uh, uh, something that happens regularly in prison? I can imagine all this testosterone. And it's 280 people in a, in a very small, like a football pitch size kind of prison. And, and you can imagine, you will fight for everything. People there are generally depressed because nobody wants to be behind bars. You know, so chances of fights are very, very high. But it, it happens, but not that quite often. Maybe you will have one fight every two weeks. Mm -hmm. mm. So the moment your wives get to prison to visit you, your very first visit, mm. I can imagine, God, I'm literally just sitting here imagining how they're feeling. I can imagine the looks, you know, in their eyes. I can imagine they're sitting there thinking, are they being strong for you? Are they breaking down? Mm. What happened in that moment? It was hard. It was hard, to be honest, it was hard on them. Uh, as expected, you know, they're human beings. They're, they're women. It was very difficult for them the first few days. And um, the good thing is that um, they had each other. If there was a moment in my life where I wasn't sure of the relationship my wife's had, mm. that time I got to realize that they, they have each other. Because also at that time, there were not um, so many people that they could um, lean on. Lean on. Yeah. They were also trying to protect their husband. Yeah. So they could not tell quite, a lot, a lot of, of people. people yeah. I also instructed them not to tell even my parents. Mm. You know, my parents got to know about it, I think, seven days after I was in prison. Because I, I still felt that if I had a plan or something that I could do, and then I could go out before my parents could know about it. So the, the fact that I had told them not to tell a lot of people, it meant a lot that... they're feeling isolated. They're feeling isolated, the yeah, the two of them. Yeah. So they had to stick together and, and, and yes, they did, you know. So, I, you know, I think what is so interesting about what then transpired with your wives, you know, them getting even closer together, mm -hmm. you know, just the support. What I was, you know, I remember, you know, talking to KJ and saying to her, mm -hmm. and she's like, well, I'm going to say that. He doesn't even, he's not even interested in anything that you're going to buy. So cook, I was like, no, I'm not going to cook. I never know how pan. So, you know, I, I think I was quite blown away by the fact that they were so consistent with bringing you food every single day, twice a day. How did that work? Mm, mm. Yeah, I think, I think maybe, um, I think maybe, I think maybe, I think maybe, Rice who like so did you order your next meal? How about this girl? Was no, that now what, you're they, trying to they make know what, feel? They know what I eat and yeah, no, how, how I after. eat. Yeah. So I don't normally have to tell them. They'll just whenever that they alternate, they alternate, but they know what. And then you know the most strangest thing was that um well it's strange, but it's not that strange because people don't know that I can tell uh who has cooked for me. Like mm -hmm. if it's a plate of food and it's there. I take two bites and I can tell this was uh, Yeah. So there were times <laughs> where um, they, they, they didn't have time to cook. Mm. And then maybe they would ask either my mother-in-law or, or our house helper to cook. Mm. And then I would immediately tell them, this was not cooked by one of you. Imagine. So they, <laughs> they would get amazed by the fact that I can pick small things like that. So but because that is the kind of life that I live, I'm so used to, to their hands, the, the food that they cook, so that I know their taste, I know yeah. how they... Yeah. You know, the fascinating thing about this, and I know somebody may wonder, you know, I'm not curious and I'm not trying to like dig deeper where the wives are concerned, but it's because we had a conversation specifically about, you know, the, your history 
and how then you came to be a polygamist yeah. and, you know, mm. how the dynamics are, you know, meeting Gariso, then eventually meeting Mpo, you know, the, the, the transition it took to you eventually having two wives. And I can't wait for you to watch that episode as well. That was the episode that we're just about to release before he went into prison. So, you know, I know all those details that you're asking about, we have them. So I'm not going to be asking the nitty hey, Kiji, Mpo, because we have all yeah, of that, have, mm. right? But I think something now that I want you to elaborate a bit more on is, um, you know, you in prison and you now becoming the go-to person. And yes, I think, yes. like I said earlier, personally, that is the pastor in you. Yeah. So is it something that happened consciously? Did you at some point then say, Can I come right? Mm. So part of what I should do while I'm here is to maybe minister, is to maybe, you know, pray for people in here, maybe. So how did that happen? Did it happen naturally? Do you just find people drawn to you? Please get us into that. Yeah, I was lucky because in the cell that I was in, um, every day at six days a church uh, for an hour. So after I was, I was on my first day, three hours later, I was seated uh, and then there were songs that were singing. And then there was the message that was being preached. And that is so natural to me. So I began to see that, oh, okay, please, people in this place, there are people here that actually love God, that live so God. Mm -hmm. So then it meant that within the next two or so days, and by the way, by the time I walked in, those guys, they already knew who I was. So it was very easy for them to schedule me into the next um, uh, message for me to be able to be the one that is preaching the message. Mm -hmm. So as I preached, and as I started to deliver the word of God, I think they got uh, somehow moved, moved and mm. they, they begin to even want to see me in private where people then will start telling me about their um, crimes, why they're in prison, what they did, how, why, how they did it, all those. There were times when I had to sit for four hours listening to somebody telling me the whole ordeal, you know, how it started up until how many years have been, they've been given to in jail for four hours. And then sometimes it will be so long and, and so I think overwhelming mm -hmm. so that, you know, I'll, it will even depress me. Because you're also dealing with... Because I'm also dealing with my own, my own problems, you know. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, because of the Holy Spirit, I was able to keep on going. And the more I listened to these guys, the more I gave them time, the more I prayed for them, the more I taught them uh, the word of God the more I get, I got stronger. Mm. And now the more then God began to reveal himself to me, you know, because then there was that part now where, remember, I didn't want to go to prison. But then days later, I began to see why I was in prison. God began to speak to me. And I was isolated. I was able to hear God clearly now. I was able to preach the word of God. I was able to do the basics, you know, not to complicate the word of God, just teach the basic, the good news, you know, the, 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 the story of Christ, you know, the, the gospel. I began to just to stay in there because when people are in, in, in jail, there are not so many messages that you can preach. You know, you can be preaching about opulence. You can be preaching about riches. They don't, they won't relate to that message. You have to preach about hope, love. Those are things that they want to hear about. So as I dwelt on that, the more I did, that the more God began to reveal himself in me, the more I begin to see God, the more I begin to hear God speak to me. Such that even the, 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 the message of forgiveness came to me. God said to me that I should then let them know, the prisoners, that God has forgiven them. They need to forgive themselves. And God wants to release a record number of prisoners from, from prison. But then he can only do that if they don't want to go and commit other crimes. Um, through that interaction so with to God, repent. Yeah, yeah, to repent through that interaction with God, I learned that a lot of them in jail wanted to go and revenge because there are men that are in prison that should not be in prison. There are those that are in prison and they have to be there because they've committed crimes. There are those that have been set up, you know, and those are bitter and angry. They are they, they were planning to revenge. So I started to preach the, the message of forgiveness and moved away from my cell to other cells. I was given an opportunity by the prison leadership because the prisoners have got kind of a council where they've got a president and a vice president and he's a prisoner. And, and I spoke to them, I said to them, I need to reach out to more and more prisoners. And they allowed me. So every time after looking up other prisoners, I'll be escorted to and preach at another cell there. 
and I'll be before the most feared prisoners, those that have committed murder, robbery, armed robbery, you know, I'll preach to them. I was preaching to them. And what, what would you say are the biggest misconceptions we have about people in prison? You know what I mean? And this is, of course, from a place of privilege. People who are outside have never stepped into yeah. prison. Of course, there are certain perceptions that, you know, they, we would have. So who are these people? You know what I mean? What did you then get to realize that you didn't know yourself before you, you stepped into prison? The first thing is that we always think that when you are a man, you walk into prison, they'll, they'll rape you. No, they won't rape you. If they want to sleep with you, they will ask you. Mm. So there's negotiation. They are, they are negotiation. Like, so when you, yeah, about Porsche. So when you do it, you are doing it because they are asking you. They don't necessarily. Well, I hear in other countries, in other prisons, they do it. But in the place where I was, they don't. They negotiate. But it, yes, it does happen. Men sleep with other men in prison. Mm. Sometimes in not hiding it. Because there's not much you can hide in prison. The place is designed such that everything has to be in the open all the time. So even when they sleep together, there are times when we are able to, to witness that. So it is not done by violence. Uh, it is not done by pushing you. There's consent. That is the first misconception. The second one is that we think that prison is for certain people and not for, for others. Uh, for others. Yeah. You get to prison, then you realize all your IT guys are in there, your lawyers are in there, your medical doctors are in there, your pastors are in there, your brothers are in there, your uncles are in there, young boys, middle-aged men, old men are in there. So basically, it's a place for all, uh, all men. You know, good people and bad people are in, are, are in prison. Mm -hmm. So you just have to start finding your way, finding your feet, who to talk to, who to trust who to run around with, because when you are running around, you are exercising, maybe you are, you are lifting weights, you have to have a certain group of people you trust to do that with. So there are that, that, so many kinds of men in there. Good and bad, smart, and I can tell you that maybe possibly the, the brightest guys are in prison. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to speak on behalf of our brothers in, in, in prison, right, uh, what would you say? What is their greatest plight? What do they wish we would know about them. You know what I mean? What are they crying out for? Because, you know, when you think about it, and I'm talking particularly about men in prison uh, as an extension of men even outside, yeah. because the fact of the matter you is could be outside and day be to in day. Prison. Do you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? We deal with men who are struggling and cannot even open up mm -hmm. because of how we're socialized mm -hmm. to keep things in. You know, we're dealing with men who are, you know, who feel neglected, who are struggling with identity. What is so... Men in prison are like to believe are an extension of the men in our society, yeah. right? Yeah. Because it's the men who in our society who end up in prison. In prison. Exactly what you're saying right yeah. now. It's the pastors, the lawyers, the fathers, the brothers, the sons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, so if you were to speak on their behalf, what would you say they're crying out for? What is that deep, you know, yearning mm. that they have as far as the world outside is concerned mm. well, sorry, mm. young, as a representative as somebody who's had an opportunity to interact with them on this platform to interact with so many yous right mm. so mm. many my brothers so yes. many my fathers yes. you know mm. you know mm. what I mean they want to be forgiven first and first because some of them clearly uh, admit that they made a mistake you know there's one guy that told me his story where he found his wife sleeping with another man. He caught the wife red-handed. And he, all he did was to take his clothes, put it in a bag, and wanted to walk away from, from the house. The, scene, yeah. the guy has already ran away. And he says the wife then uh, pulled, pulled him back. back. You know, he tried by all means to just walk away. And then I think throughout the, 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 the whole issue, he got so, he was already angry, you know, because he, he saw his wife in bed with another man. And then, then they started to scaffold. And then he says, from nowhere, he found a wife, a knife in, on top of the, the table and then stabbed the, his wife to death. And, and, you know, since that moment, he, he wanted forgiveness from the wife, from the kids, from... You know, it happened, I think, in the heat of the moment. You know, I don't think that everybody plans for that. That kind of a scenario, when you listen to him speak, you can tell that he didn't really go out planning for that. So that guy, he represents 
a lot of guys that are in there that are saying, we did things that we didn't want to do. We, are, we acknowledge and we accept that we regret what we, what we have done. So a lot of them are asking for forgiveness. They want the society to welcome them back. They want the society to even reach out to them. Because, you know, I've noticed that part of the things that I did in there, there were some boys that I found in there that I could tell that they got into prison when they were young, 18s, 19s. So I started to give them love. You know, there's certain things that I would maybe get to newspapers. And then after reading them, I'll give first to them to read. And I could see a change in behavior. So I could almost tell that sometimes what makes people criminals is lack of love. So men are, are crying for love also because they don't, ex they don't know how to express. Young boys don't know how to express to their parents that we want the same affection that we are giving to our sisters. We want the same thing. But they are there and as, I think the society have just... Um, put them aside, they are not loving them enough. And then in the process, they are breaking them inside. And these men, they grow up being broken and angry. And they take it out on wrong people, people that are supposed to protect and love. Yeah, so there is that whole intriguing discovery about men. You find men in the most vulnerable um, state that they could be. And then you begin to understand them that, you know, as scary as they might look, they've got that soft spot. You know, they've got that thing that they are appealing to you. You know, there are two of them that say to me, please never ever forget us. Even when you go out, please come back and come and check on us. Mm -hmm. and, and I could see that they meant it because they, it's like they are longing for that affection for somebody who understands them and who not judge them for having been in prison. And, and, and it's a promise that I made to them that even when I'm outside, I'll never forgive them. I'll, 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 I'll prepare for their release because I think one is coming in three years and, and I, I'll make all the efforts so that when they come, I will make that transition back to society easier. So, but, but I, I then saw that the job is bigger than, than I thought. Thank you. And I was yeah. going to take it there, you know, uh, because I think one of the things may be that whether you like to acknowledge it or not, right. Uh, even as a polygamist, before we even get to your prison experience and you get into interact, you know, with other men in prison, you, you, you are already a man that a lot of men find relatable. Yes. Because whether consciously or unconsciously, whether publicly or in their private spaces, yes. the fact that you're a polygamist, there are a lot of men, like all my friends and their friends are their friends' friends. Yes. But it's a little polygamy. Yes. You get what I'm saying? True, the true. fact that you're a polygamist, you know, has positioned you as a man that you know, a lot of men find relatable, right? Mm -hmm. And now you get this experience to go into prison and you get to yet again interact with men only. Yes. Do you get what I'm yes. saying? Perhaps let's talk about, you know, according to you, what is the role of the man in society? You know what I mean? Where are the gaps as far as the role of the man in healing this very broken, bleeding society. So that I'm challenging you now as my friend mm -hmm. to interrogate deeper. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, you know, I would like to believe as a polygamist, let's separate your worldly desires. Yes. Your, you know, whatever the desire was for you to take two wives, mm -hmm. right? My sisters. Uh, you know, let's separate that from the fact that now it has drawn a male audience to you. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? And if you were to play the role of healer, in society, what role does the man need to play in society to ensure that our society is healed? Because I, we've already spoken about mm, you mm, get what I'm saying? Mm, men need to be healed themselves. Mm, mm, but we also need to acknowledge the role that has to be played by the very broken men mm, in healing our society. society yeah. And I'm giving you that responsibility, you know, to, to interrogate it, mm. to think about it, to facilitate it. Mm. That's very true. And, and, and believe me, ever since I, got, I went to prison, I've come to realize that my calling is bigger than I thought. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things that I discovered while I was in there. And um, like you are saying, this issue of men is quite, is quite intriguing and complicated. Uh, mind you, when men are in prison, I think my estimation says that there are about plus or minus 30,000 men in prison. And it is not just men. I discovered... I, I would literally walk into a cell and I would ask them questions. For example, I'll say, how many of you are breadwinners? 90% mm. of the cell will raise their hands. How many of you are um, business leaders? 80% will raise up their hands. 
So then I got to discover, you know, when you do statistics, you can you, you don't have to do the whole prison, uh, the entire uh, prisons in the country. Mm -hmm. When you sample with the prison that you are in, held in, I then got to discover that most important top men are in prison. So the society the is robbed. Brilliant. Or, yeah, and most the brilliant. Most, yeah. most skillful guys in football are in prison. You know, the best dancers are in prison. Leaders are in prison. The most innovative guys are in prison. So the society is robbed of such talent. But most importantly, the society is robbed of leadership. Because men need to come out of prison and come and lead their families, lead the society, lead the church, lead um, all efforts that are meant to transform the society. Father but they, their they, kids. Father their kids. The most important mm. thing is they need to come and father their kids. Mm. Because in their absence, nobody is going to do it. Mm. And that is why now, if you look at all the stories of these young boys that have been committing this, this, this issue, these crimes, even those that are in jail, you ask them, where is your father? They tell you, I never knew my father. Mm. So it's like boys that are, are, are grow without their father. They, have, they, they end up being criminals mm. because there's nobody to, to look after to mold them, you know, to, 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 to talk to them with that deep voice to say, you can't do that, mm. you know, because at a certain to point... To be male role models. To be male role, yeah. role models, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I, I think maybe also as a country and as a society, we need to change the approach of uh, sending people to jail. That is what I think. I think uh, as much as you would want to take your... Uh, the, 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 the father of your daughter to, to prison for lack of maintenance, you have to also rem remember that they have to also be there for the, the same father. kid, for the same kid, yeah. the, to come and play the fatherly role. Is there something that you can do to the guy to punish him for to take care of, of the child, but not send the, 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 the man to, to prison? Child off. Because yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Mm. I, I think there are so many uh, crimes that, for me, I think they could people can be punished, but still be in the society. Where maybe, for example, they will spend the day working for the government somewhere. By the end of the day, they go back home to be with their families. Then the next morning, they go back there, you know, so that they don't lose time. Because imagine if somebody is in jail for eight years, 13 years. By the time you come out, if your child was five years, you don't even know who they are. And now that child is going to be a problem to society. So as much as the society wants to see criminals locked behind bars, they should also understand that they are brooding others. So there should be, according there should be to, there balance. should be like a, a, a gray area. Yeah, there should be a gray area. Yeah. yeah. But, but do you believe uh, criminals can be uh, rehabilitated? Rehabilitated, yeah. Yeah. Every human being can be rehabilitated. Mm -hmm. It's just that I think our prisons are not set up for rehabilitation. First thing, if you, you are going to try to rehabilitate a person and you build a very big wall around them, that there's, there's no way that person is going to be rehabilitated. The colors also of the prison, the colors of the clothes that they wear, the, the setup of the cell, the, the fences that you put around. Because you are almost telling the mind of that person that you is done, you are gone, out. You understand? But if you look at other countries, what they are doing, prisoners also in other countries, they've got times where the wife and the children can actually have Intimate time with them. Yeah. In yeah. other prisons, even the wife sleeps with the with the with the husband one or two days per week. Mm. But and I think that is, that is rehabilitation. Mm. You know, because if you deny them, is it access, rehabilitation or giving them perks that they should otherwise have? No, I think with that's the, rehabilitation the yeah. because you don't want these guys to start being people that they were not. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You 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 got a guy who was used to sleeping with women. You put him behind bars for twenty five years. By the time he comes out, he was sleeping with women, but now he's sleeping with men and women now. Is that a rehabilitation? Mm. You understand? So that is what I'm saying. Maybe we need to look into our system as a country and as a society to see, but is it really working for us? And I, I, I think with the experience, it is not working. It is actually making these guys worse than they were. I, I, I spoke to one guy who said to me, you know, I came to prison and I wasn't swearing. Next is I, I, I learned swearing here and I learned violence here because I, I noticed that if I was not violent, these guys were going to overrun me because the place is almost like set up for violence. The place is small and then there are 360 people in a small place. What are you expecting? Is testosterone in there. Mm. If you were to keep people in separate rooms, where if I don't want to interact, I could spend the day in my place. Then maybe I read my book, I read my Bible in there. I could come out rehabilitated, but then you don't have a, a chance for that. You are in one place that there is over 50 of you in, in, one, in one room, in one cell. 
Even if you want to arrest somebody who's making noise, playing music, smoking, swearing. So how did you then, you know, get to find out that you are finally leaving, right? Mm. Is it something that, of course, you know, because you, of course, you had access to visitors mm. every day. Is it twice or three times a day? You were kept updated. Yeah. Were you at any point or was it too short a period for you to, to struggle with transitioning back into society? Did you at any point wonder, where am I going to begin, right? Yeah, I, I, think, I think when I was inside, um, I, I had spent just, a, a, I think, a day short of two months in prison. Mm. I thought that, you know, as I come out, the transition is going to be just like a switch. I didn't, I didn't realize that two months is quite a long time in prison. So that when I come out, I have to readjust because the times you sleep, where you go, what you do, what you can't do. I was now almost literally used to that. But then I had to come out and then have free will. You know, start fathering, start being a husband again, start heavy responsibilities. So the first... And a husband, not just to one, but to but two. But two wives, you know, you understand? And, <laughs> yeah. and there were so many things left behind that I needed to catch up with. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> A lot of catching up yeah, to do. Yeah, a lot of catching up to do. Uh, so, so even up to now, it's still a struggle. There mm-hmm. are certain times where I'm overwhelmed, mm-hmm. especially with calls, people wanting to check on me. Um, it's, like, it's like the more people want to check on you, and, and, and find if you're okay, the more they, it frustrates. Yeah. You know, there are times where I would then literally have to switch off my phone so that I can breathe, you know. So the transition back is not smooth. And you can only imagine then what the case is for somebody who's been in there for 10 years. For 10 years. Yeah. For 15 years, for 25 years, for five years. Mm. If two months coming out after two months is that much of a struggle, go to the transition. So then it speaks to your nakanya assimilation of there, there, I believe there are a lot of society. things that we take for granted. Yeah. When I was coming out, remember I said I spent just a day short of two months. Believe me, I was struggling with, with my phone. I was struggling with, with small things, you know, that I've taken for granted ever in life that, you know, I always have my phone. I could not, I had to start calling and saying, how do you subscribe for this? Which numbers do you, do you put in? You know, I never thought that uh, those things can be taken away from you like that. But, you know, the mind of human being is so strange that if you have to put somebody in a, in a place and deny them of certain things, maybe for a period of seven that. days, they, it, it kind of, it is kind of erased from them. So imagine somebody who's been there, like you are saying, for 10 years. Mm-hmm. They literally don't even know when they come out whether to walk first with the left or right foot first. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't even know whether to you it's, it's, it's normal to see the developments going around. Some, some of these guys have been in jail so that you don't even know that there's this building. Or a CBD. Or a CBD. Yeah, yeah, there's CBD. 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 They, they don't even know that there's CBD. You understand? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. everything would look and sound so strange. And then news moves so, so quickly. You know, people change things, change. So there's a whole lot of uh, adaptation that you have to do. Like there are stories right now that I'm trying to catch up. I can't yeah, even understand. Yeah, just now we're talking we're about Cabo Besta and Cabo. like you're like, Dr. Mang, you know, like, so I think that is really true testament to what you're saying. I, I'm struggling with, with, with catching up, but mm. I think with time I will, I, will, I will adapt. Let's talk about, you know, I think as we're wrapping up, right, Jorge, your advice, you were in there for civil imprisonment. Yeah. What advice would you have for people who are going through you know, similar situations because mm. kind of civil imprisonment, the Abi Hora or no one else, yeah. so I don't even want to make it about your Sukulut in particular because mm. I have a Sukulut I'm yeah. dealing with. The person next door has a Sukulut that, that mm. they're dealing with, you know mm. what I mean? So, how do I navigate the space? Can I Sukulut? And one of the penalties is civil imprisonment. Mm. How do I get to civil imprisonment? Can I avoid civil imprisonment? So, I want you to give us advice in that regard. You know, I, I think also, uh, listen, the statistics are saying uh, our country's household debt is at about 56 billion. It means that your uncle is in debt, you are in debt, your wife is in debt, your mother is in debt, your brother, because 54 billion for 2 million people, it shows you that literally That's everybody crazy. is in debt. Yeah. But I think the difference maybe is because so many people go to jail, it's not known about. That's it. Yeah. It's a little secret. It's a, it's a little Has secret. secret. So with me, it was, it, was, it was three uh, newspaper headlines. 
and and you you know but but I think the point here that I'm trying to make is that it's almost as if some of these things are non-avoidable. Mm. They would they would eventually happen to to most of us. So they have happened to most of us. But the most important thing that I can say maybe to business people, because this to me it was a business debt mm. that I didn't get just before COVID. And you know, with two years of COVID, there was nothing that either I or any other person could could do to, to change this the, the situation. Um is as businesses we need to respond sometimes to court process mm -hmm. and court uh, because I understand that sometimes some people when they are served with court papers they take them they hide them thinking that if you don't they don't appear, if you don't acknowledge it yes it's, it's gonna it go away it's gonna go away mm -hmm. and that the biggest mistake that you will make because then that person is going to get a default judgment and then when they get a default judgment you are in it they can decide any time to trigger it mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people that have got civil uh, imprisonment it's only that. The, the 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 complainant or the plaintiff doesn't exercise uh, the right to take you to prison. They just scare you with it. But then others are so cold, then they'll just send you to prison with it. So the advice is that as much as I can't tell people to stop trying, because some people like me, we don't have any other choice. Yeah, but, but they keep, keep trying. on trying. Yeah. You know, I was telling guys in prison that were there for days to say, you know, I represent boys from rural areas. You know, those people that don't have names, mm -hmm. they don't have people to bail them out. The mistake that I made, the risk that I took, there are some boys and men out there that have taken them. And they, when they went bad, somebody came and bailed them out. Mm -hmm. I don't have that. You don't have that. My friend there doesn't have that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So we, I have to work hard so that my kids don't have to go through the same thing. I know for a fact that my son is going to be a businessman. He's going to make a bad business decision. But I have to be in a position to be able to assist him, to take him out of that. Yeah. Because that is what is lacking. It is not that people are not making mistakes. They are. Actually, some, some of them are making bigger mistakes. One lawyer who came to check on me was telling me, kind of the people that owns of 100 million. Mm. You know, yours, your, your company is just only 200,000. Mm. You know, this, but, but then those that owe 400, 400 million, there are people that are able to speak, speak and negotiate on their behalf. And I understand it, it goes on to that question where people were asking because I'm a regional secretary. I, I was just about of, to go of, there. Yeah. You know, people are then saying, but like, you're a politician. Can I triple P? Can I give a triple P? My wife's called me triple you, P. Now. You are a polygamist. You're a pastor. Uh, you're a politician mm. and ex prisoner. So, no, I think it's four now. so, before, right? So, people are saying, no, as a politician, you know, with all those high profile people visiting you, where was, you know, the political the ruling, party the, you are affiliated. The ruling, the ruling party. Where, where was the ruling party that you are so loyal to? And this is, you know, word on the ground, on the streets. You know, literally people are saying, eh, hey, hey, now worry. Yeah. I, I think there is, there is this misconception and, and, and wrong expectation of people uh, on their parties and their political leaders. My president is one of the people that always talks about corruption and, and his hate for corruption. And I think if there was any doubt that he does actually hate corruption, my story represents us that if my government was that corrupt, they would have pulled the money from somewhere uh, and, you and bailed me out just because, because I'm, I'm a regional secretary. Mm. But, but that had nothing to do with the party. It had nothing to do with my political position. I had to, because it was a business decision, I had to do it in the best way that I could without even having to compromise the party. At times, actually, I even started to advise uh, some party leadership not to get involved mm -hmm. because I also didn't want to compromise them. You know, yes, yeah, some of them are friends with, uh, with me, but you don't want to put them in a situation where it's like they're helping you because they are in power. You know, they, they are coming, uh, you know, if you are BDP, when you make a mistake, you're always going to be bailed out. And I think that is wrong. If, if you are a member of the ruling party, and you rape somebody, you have to go to jail. And, and the president should not intervene. And I'm happy that he didn't intervene. I'm happy that the vice president didn't intervene. I'm happy that the secretary general didn't intervene. I dealt with it uh, through my business partners mm -hmm. and my family, and we were able to deal with it, with it. So if there has been that misconception from people that if you are BDP, you can go to, to, to jail, you would, you would be bailed out. I wasn't. I was, I was totally bailed out by my family and my, my business partners and some close friends.
Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you know, people normally say when you are at your lowest, that's when you really see who your true friends yes, are. Yes. Did you experience that? You know, uh, were Lord. you... Okay. I was disappointed by certain people. Mm-hmm. I was there were people that I expected to see in jail. For yeah, they mm. didn't come. There was there were people. Some of the newspaper headlines were leaked by my friends. Mm. They leaked them to the media. Uh, they even in the process wanted to compromise my wives. Mm. They said they said certain things. Some of my friends started to spread rumors about me even when I was in jail. Mm. They started to spread rumors about my family even when I was in jail. My close friends. There are people that I've helped in so many ways, one or the other, that uh, when I was down, they began to dance. Some, even some close family members, like people that I never expected, news started to come out. People's reaction came out. Some danced that I didn't expect. Uh, so just like I wrote the story of I died, mm. I, 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 while I was in prison, I was literally dead. And I was watching people coming to view my corpse, you know. So I begin to see from prison who was crying when I was, di- when I was dead, who was mourning, who was celebrating, who was throwing in soil inside the grave so that I don't even get a chance to rise up. Mm. So I saw all that. Mm. And, and, and whether you like it or not, it's such a sad and, 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 and depressing discovery okay. to realize that there are people that you, you trusted that backstabbed you. Don't you then appreciate that you had to go through this because now it has somewhat sieved, you know, uh, the pool of people you consider friends. But it's shown you who's for you and who's against you. Yes. You know what I mean? Because sometimes without these kind of experiences, you never get to, because Monati you know what I mean? So how will you the one who is celebrating when life is good? Of course, me, you, we all want to be around. As much as I would want to say, I, I was happy for that to have happened. And I'm happy that I know who is for me and who is not for me. Generally, you don't, you don't want to lose friends. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Especially when you yourself, you, 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 you genuinely loved those people. Yeah, you, you know, whatever hard that, for Yeah, them. you worked hard for them. And, and I, I think I have to um, specifically talk about my friend, stroke, business partner, Tebe. Uh, even this afternoon, I was in a meeting with some other guys that said, Kadena Mana, you and Tebe, um, what, are, what are you guys, you know, the, the kind of commitment that this guy had on, on your, your arrest and, and, and your release, it, sure it, was, it, was, yeah. it was out of this world. I was told that this guy's moved mountains. He literally didn't sleep for the entire time. He, he stood with my family. He, he made sure that my kids and my wife were comfortable. He was there the whole time. He checked me daily in prison. He, he negotiated. He even insulted people. He, he was in the middle of everything. And I think it, this taught me uh, he, he, the kind of person that he is. He, it kind of um, shown me that, oh, okay, at least I've got somebody in my life that even if I was to die today, I know you'll take you care know of my your family. family will be taken care yeah. of. And speaking of family, my friend, I think, you know, we, we haven't always agreed about this. And I think it comes up, of course, in that other episode mm. that we recorded where we were just talking about, you know, your, you coming up and how you end up as a polygamist. And, but I think, you know, if there's something that I've come to realize, and I know a lot of people, I never doubted this, but I know it's a conversation, you know, that a lot of people have had. I thought, hey! Are it's a polygamisty, you know, Bokai polygamisty, he's in prison. You know, people were expecting even your family to crumble. Yeah, yeah. Because the expectation is that your wives are there for the good. You know, and I know I kept saying, you just don't know. You just don't know what's going to happen. You just don't know those women. You know what I mean? You just don't know what these people have, right? Because I've been witness to it. So I think you, you are blessed. That's one thing that I can say. You really are blessed where family is concerned. Uh, and I know it's also due to the role you play as leader, the role you play as partner. You know what I mean? The fact that you respect your family, you respect your wives. Uh, yet again, I'll re- refer to the conversation that we had where you were even talking about you know, the misconceptions that people have about polygamy. Yeah. You know, mm. those are, mm. you, know, um, you know, myths that you, you, you really debunk. You know, those are, with a solid voice. But you don't get married to a second wife because if anything, it's the opposite. You know, you have to love and people still don't so understand that. and be so strong as a unit. 
that you have the capacity to bring the next yeah. person. Not because of the opposite. Mm. They don't get it. You know, this is why they get, I'm really excited for them to watch that episode. And I think these are conversations that we need to have more mm. of. You know, we may not agree because I don't want to be in a polygamous setup. You don't setup. want to be the third one. <laughs> I don't want to be the third one. <laughs> Definitely not. But I've come to respect your choices, your decisions. Mm. And welcome back, man. Welcome mm. back. And, you know, I'm really in awe of the growth, the learnings, you know, the fact that you're able to take lemon and turn it into lemonade. Yeah. And as your friend, of course, I'm very protective of your heart. And I also don't want you to act tough, right? Yeah. But if there's something else that I appreciate is the fact that you didn't hide, yeah. right? Yeah. The fact that you're doing this. Yeah. Like, it, it's so easy for you. Mm. But you are bold enough to say, no, I present myself as is. Yes, I've been to prison. One thing that the devil uh, likes or th always throws at us is, is fear. Mm. But the Bible says that uh, if we don't have the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power. So I, I whatever that comes through uh, my way uh, or to my family or my ministry, to my church, I have relied so much on the Holy Spirit says that I'll be, I'll be able to uh, withstand it and then ride on it. Whatever that the enemy throws at you, whether it's um, lack of money, lack of one or two things, uh, if people think that sending you to jail was going to break you, God then turns it around and it becomes something that builds you. Believe me, I'm a better husband now. I'm a better husband. I'm a better preacher. I'm a better businessman. You know, generally just a lot about me has improved. Mm. And I was telling people that the day I walked out of prison, I was actually looking behind. It's more like I wanted yeah. even to, to stay longer. I wanted because then I began to appreciate the process. Mm. That, oh, okay, I, did, I was not here for punishment. I was here for promotion. Mm. So I feel promoted. I feel empowered. I'm not afraid. Mm. Even as a man of God now, I'm much more confident mm. in my calling more than I was. There are things that I did in prison that I haven't, I haven't done outside. There are people that I laid my hands on and they immediately got healed. There are people that I prayed for, they stopped smoking. There are people that I prayed for, they started seeing visions, dreams. They said they have never seen visions, dreams in their lives. Somebody that is 45 years and he says, man of God, I have never ever had a vision. I laid my hand on them. The next day they came and told me a vision that explained to them why they're, they're in jail. Mm -hmm. You can't fake that. I was, in, I was able to do all that because I was in prison, mm. because I was separated by God. And in that separation, I was promoted. 100%. Yes. You know what? Uh, thank you for, for, for this conversation. Um, and, you know, there's, a, there's one question that I know people want me to ask, right? Mm. After you left. <laughs> was there a party that night? <laughs> <laughs> which, was which night, there which a night party that out? night? The first night out. Was oh, there a party when I came with the I came girls? Then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one is best when we are together. Of course. And we are yeah, going to have a conversation to, um, to, you know, having them uh, as well. And then you can ask us whether... Uh, or, or, and then what the happened? You know, because the thing about it is, those are the kind of things that people think about. I know yeah. you get this a lot, Kori. So like some I saw people asking worry. <laughs> exactly the point, uh, you know. But yeah, you mm. know, thanks for, 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 for being here. And I look forward to having more conversations with you. Uh, you know, touching base with you. I'm looking forward to having the girls here, you know, to just touch base. Libo and take us through, you know, the what emotions, that experience, yeah. their emotions, what mm. the experience was, that experience was for them, you know. Mm. I remember the conversations I'd have with KG and, you know, just tell her how, uh, you know, also with the media mm. attention and you are blessed as well, over and above everything, this could have been more sensationalized than it was. Yeah. What happened is here and there, you know, people decided to share the story. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with them sharing the story. You are a person of public interest. You make headlines. Yeah. You know, we can't be okay, victims yeah. about it. Yeah, I guess. True. But also, you are so fortunate. The media protected you. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Uh, actually, a big number of um, media uh, people came to visit me in jail. Uh, some of them, even when the story was leaked to them, they decided not to, 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 to broadcast it, to print it. I've got people that were with me the day I was taken to jail. Pre uh, media media mm. people, four journalists, 
that came on the day of my arrest, but they didn't take it out. So uh, I was, I, I say I'm, I'm that fortunate. Yeah. I think maybe it's also my relationship with the media because I've never really hidden anything away from them. My life is like an open book to them. And some of, a lot of them are my friends. Like we talk, I'm vulnerable to them. You know, they know I've got problems and I don't hide them away from them. I talk to them and they don't publicize them. Exactly the point. Yeah. Scotty? So, buddy, thank you so much for tuning in to our live conversations. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know, this is the first of many conversations that you can look forward to. And yeah, do share away. Let everyone know. Our live conversations. We're back. <laughs>